Hello, welcome to this um, beginner tip guide for Axis Nallos 1942 Online. Um, so I'm making this video because I started playing the, the, the game myself a few months ago when it first came out. Um, and I found when looking online for sort of good strategies and ideas to play as each nation, there wasn't a lot of information um, and what I could find, um, you're never sure the person's credentials. <laughs> You know, you don't know how long they've been playing. If it's actually regarding the actual edition you're playing, which is this one, I think it's the is it 1942 second edition, I believe. This is the one. This is what this is. Um, but again, you're not sure if they're, if they're how you know how much experience they really do have, um, whether it's actually they're talking about good strategies or not. Um, so I just thought I'd put a very basic um, tip video up, just with some things that I've experienced um, so far while I've been playing the game. Um, as in myself, I've played about 100 hours now. Um, it's about 40 odd games. Um, I'm currently on the rankings. Um, I'm in gold, gold. Axis and allies for both. Um, the rankings go wood, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Which I would love to get in at some point, but I'm not quite there. We're working towards it. We're close as um, Axis. We're, we're 30th in Axis, so we're, we're not far off, but <laughs> better work to do still. But yeah, that's, that's, my, uh, that's my background on the game so far. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I thought I'd just share a few things. So, number one. Oh, before I get started, I suppose, uh, this is this is more aimed towards beginner players, um, advanced and intermediate. I don't think they would have much to learn from this, as it's all probably goes without saying. But uh, it may be some reminders that it might be helpful to uh, just reiterate, I guess. But yes, it's mainly aimed at, aimed at beginners. So number one. Um, I would recommend, before jumping into any ranked games, um, to do a few things on single player. Um, now they have a, a learning campaign on the game, um, but it's quite basic, it doesn't cover a lot of the game mechanics, or in particular a lot of the different units that you're going to be using in the main game. Um, so what I'd recommend doing is creating a game um, of single player, just whatever, call it whatever, um, and just playing around. Just jump in and have a go. Um, the nice thing about the single player is you can actually pick, to, you can choose to be all the nations yourself, and you can just jump into a game and then obviously get a feel for how each nation plays. Um, possibly work out a few strategies, you know, create some units to see all the units that you can build and have a play around. Just um, yeah, have a feel for it. Maybe play for a game by yourself just to see, and have a game against the computer possibly. Um, it's a good idea this because obviously the, the, the tutorial gives you very little. I think it, it focuses about there's some kind of uh, attacks on Africa you can do. You do a few transports and landings and amphibious assaults. But yeah, as it says, the, the overall game, it does very little. So this might be a worthwhile uh, thing to do before you jump into ranked. Okay, so tip number two. Um, I would recommend when playing um, all games just to double check every move you do <laughs> just take your time don't rush it and just double check um, so obviously this is the board you'll see at the beginning of any rank game uh, this is the Larry I can't remember the name Larry Harris something Genicon variation um, so this is the board you'll see basically in any rank game um, for a beginner this can look quite overwhelming um, knowing what to do where to move you know what to prioritize um, so I just say pay attention to all you're doing, you know, make sure you've thought about where you want to be moving with each unit. Um, and when you've finished your combat moves, non combat moves, just going over one more time and double checking because the amount of times I've <laughs> been rushing through a turn, eager to like attack something or you know, um, move on somewhere, and I've forgotten about the units that's sitting down here. Examples of this, I guess, is Britain. You have a unit over here, infantry, which I normally like to bring over here so I can transport somewhere useful. And also the bottom of Africa. If you're just scanning around up in your, near Europe or down in, in India, if you're not checking properly, you'll probably miss this infantry, and he's more useful moving up north <laughs> to try and defend against the uh, German troops there. So, yeah, end of every turn, just just double check, make sure you've um, thought about all your units and uh, you have them where you want them to be. Okay, number three, um, Axis It's a team game, so you want to be coordinating. Um, between the nations, so Germany and Japan, um, you want to have you want to go in there with a strategy and try and work together. Um, it's more 
clear with allies. They really do have to work as a team. I find with Axis that they're quite obviously they're separated, um, and you find they generally don't um, combine too often, like directly, indirectly. Obviously they do, but directly you you won't find them be helping each other much until the later game. Um, with the allies, it's different. They're they're more they need each other a lot more <laughs> basically. Um, so Russia can't hold off against Germany without help from um, the US or Britain, um, and same Britain can't take on Germany. So it's it's a it's a very much a team effort to bring down the Axis as the Allies. Um, I find that obvious. What I like to do recently actually is, is to combine my uh, U.S. and British fleet in the Pacific and try and take on Japan together. Um, so obviously, working individually, it's going Japan going to have an easier time. So working as a team is definitely a good thing. Um, this also means you can put friendly troops into your Allies' territory. Um, a good little tip is these fighters in uh, Britain, they can reach Archangel, which is this province, and they can also re reach West Russia, which is here. Um, obviously you need to control the province, but if you have control of West Russia, you can fly in fighters to help defend, which is a good sort of, you know, team effort between Russia and Britain. And also Russia do need the help early on. They can come under severe pressure from Germany very quickly, so anything you can do to help them out as Britain is, is a good thing. Um, so just remember that when you're playing your games that you can, you know, stack some certain promises with units from different nations. Um, so that'll, that'll come in handy. Okay, number four. Don't underestimate artillery in this game. Um, I find a lot of players, they tend to only build infantry, um, which are cheaper than artillery, but they don't give you the same attack power as an infantry and an artillery. Um, so if we just look at the, the, the stats for uh, infantry here, we've got a one attack, which means when they attack a, an enemy province, they're going to be attacking on a one, which means when they, they go into the combat phase, they have to roll only a one to do some damage. Um, artillery, on the other hand, they attack on a two. So when they're attacking, if you roll a two or below, um, they'll do a hit against the enemy. So they're, they're more effective. Um, but the nice thing is that when you combine these two together, if you're attacking, say, let's just quickly. So when you're attacking an enemy province, if you use two together, so we're, in this attack we've got an infantryman and an artillery moving together, um, the artillery will pair up with the infantry and increase the infantry's attack power by one. So the infantry will now attack as a two instead of a one. Um, and that's because it's paired with an artillery unit. So, in, in effect, if you build an artillery over an infantryman, you're essentially getting two more attack because your artillery will have two and you're buffing the infantry by one as well. Um, and I see a lot of players, they tend to only build infantry. Obviously, they're very good. They're a brilliant, cheap defensive unit, but they don't give you many options offensively. Um, and I find just throwing, particularly as Russia as well, it, it tends to happen with Russia a lot, I see a lot of players just building purely infantry, um, and I think it's more effective to have a few artillery mixed in, because then you're threatening offensive moves as well, so it gives the German player more to think about if they if they know that Russian player can attack them back, because um, having you know purely infantry sitting there, you, you're not too concerned if they actually attack you, because you're obviously going to be able to defend very effectively. It's worth noting that in, infantry defend on a two, so. Sitting back with infantry is more effective than attacking because they're, they're very poor attackers. That's just something to think about. I think, um, particularly with Russia, don't only build infantry but mix in a few artillery as well, just to give yourself an offensive option. Number five, blocking the blitz. So, tanks are an excellent unit in this game. Um, one important move they can do is they well they they can move on a two which means they can move two spaces at once um so this tank for example could move here then here in one turn um and they can do something it's called a blitz move so it's a fun example so have a look at this tank here imagine there was no german troops in these provinces this tank, when it was attacking, it could take this province and this province in one turn. Um, to prevent this, it's always good to have an infantryman or something there blocking them off. Um, this happens a lot with Russia. 
So if the Germans get uh, Karelia, which is this, this, this territory here, um, they have the potential to sweep in tanks around the back and start taking away a lot of the Russian provinces. Um, to prevent this, always keep a, an infantry or something blocking them off to keep them at one space at a time. It will slow them down and obviously it means you're going to save some IPC throughout the game. Um, another thing worth noting is industrial complexes. Um, they prevent the blitz attack. So imagine again there was no Russian troops here. This German tank, um, if it wanted to attack Caucasus and then Kazakh, it couldn't go. Th it couldn't do a blitz move like this because the industrial complex would prevent it. So it would be stuck at Caucasus. So you don't need to add an infantry to a place that's already got an industrial complex. That will do it for you. So yeah, preventing a blitz is a good a good thing just to prevent the tanks from storming over and taking away a lot of your IPC, which is valuable. So always block the blitz. So number six, uh, mobilizing troops. So at the beginning of each uh, round, you'll have the option to buy some units and then mobilize them at the very end of the round. Um, and you can mobilize troops in any region that's got an industrial complex. Um, so for Britain here, it's Britain, obviously, and India. Now, if you look carefully, you can see that India's got three rating of IPC. So it's creating three IPC, and it's got an industrial complex. Um, but this means that it can only field, you can only mobilize three units in this region. Um, so if I build, say I, I bought eight infantry at the beginning of the turn, I can only put three in India. The remainder would have to go to Britain. So there'd be five in Britain, or we could just put them all in Britain. So there'd be eight infantry in Britain and nothing in India. Um, it's worth noting that if you have an industrial complex um, on the coastline, like we do in India here, um, you can spend three and put three, say, ships in the sea. Um, it's no worth noting, though, but you can't put three in the sea and then also three on land. It can only be three for this entire region. So the three is included in the sea, sea part of the region as well. So... We could do a battleship and then two infantry here. We could do, you know, one infantry and, you know, two transports, but at a maximum of, of three. And I've been caught that before when I first started out the game. I've been building like, you know, 10 units thinking I could put them, you know, like a mix of four here and like six here in the sea. But actually, no, you're limited to eight. Um, the game won't let you create more than you can deploy. But it's just making sure you know you know where you are deploying them because you might be thinking you can put more than you can into a certain region and you get surprised when you actually you know realize oh wait I've already deployed three here I can't do more so I have to take it to somewhere you actually don't want those troops so just be aware of when you're creating troops that you can place them where you want um, and have a think about where you want them to go before creating them. Okay, and the final point: defending your capital cities. So, in a standard game of ranked, um, the Axis have to control nine victory cities, which are the ones with the uh, the icons over them, the nation's icons. You see here, there's four here. They've got Russia, Karelia, uh, India down here. So, obviously, th these will change once you gain control of them as different nations. Um, so, by the end of the turn, if the Axis control nine or the Allies control ten, they'll win the game. Um, but there are special conditions with the capital cities. Um, so obviously Germany has Berlin as the capital, the UK has London, um, Russia, Moscow, and so on. If the enemy were to take this, so for example if the Germans were able to overpower Russia and control Moscow, um, which is quite likely, because <laughs> Russia are quite weak in this game, um, the Russians on the next turn wouldn't be able to mobilize any troops at all. They'd be, um, they, they, they wouldn't have any points to spend. Uh, and also, the Germans, for taking that, um, on their next turn, they would have extra IPC to spend. Um, and that amount of IPC is how much Russia had on the previous turn to spend. Um, so, for example, so say in this turn, if, if Germany were to take Russia on this turn, uh, the Russians have 24 IPC. So when Germany take it, they'd have an extra 24 to spend on round 2 next turn. So it's it's crippling. It's, it's basically a kill move. If you can take a, a nation's capital, it's it's pretty much a kill move. Not always, but it's it certainly gives you a huge uh, leg up if you're not doing so well, or you know, it pushes you ahead if you're already doing well. It's it's, it's a very good move to make. If you can take a capital city, take it. Cause it it's so worth it. Um, so yeah, it means you just can't build anything for a turn. 
So obviously, if, if, <laughs> if you find you've left it undefended, uh, make sure you, you've covered that because people will punish you for it. So above all else, I think it's worth noting as well, Russia, I keep coming back to Russia, but they're, they're quite a, a lot of these points are illustrated well with Russia. Um, if you find that Germany is starting to push you quite hard and you don't think you can hold everything, then it's better just to pull back to, to Moscow and hold Moscow. Because at the end of the day, if you lose Moscow, then it's over. Because you're not going to be, a, if you can't retake it, um, then you're in bad shape. Even if you could retake it, you've lost one round of recruitment which, as Russia, again, will, will probably kill you anyway. <laughs> so, if, you, um, yeah, if you're yeah, if you under pressure from Germany, if you don't think you can hold the, the capital comfortably, then pull back and make sure you can, because um, that's, that's the real place that matters. Um, so, never lose your capitals if you can avoid it. Um, if it does happen, then, yeah, it's likely that you're on a way to a, a loss, to be fair. But, yeah, so that's it. I hope that was, in some ways, helpful. Um, let me know in the comments if uh, there's any th things you think are worth mentioning to beginner players. Uh, there's, there's probably a lot of things that I've missed and uh, people can think about. But um, yeah, hope this was um, in some way useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.